All right, we are live. Should I I'll go ahead and call roll for the first application? Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Jewell? Here. Mr. Bellis? Here. Mr. Bohovich? Here. Mr. McNulty? Here. And Mr. Doherty? Here. Kind of a motion to come back from recess for application 019-02 TH Midwest Tank. I'll move. Second. A motion made by Mr. Bellis to come back from recess for application number zone 19 02. Uh, Mr. Doherty, those voting. Mr. Jewell? Yes. Mr. Bellis? Yes. Mr. Pahavich? Yes. Mr. McNulty? Yes. And Mr. Doherty? Yes. Okay. Right. Oh, I missed the last meeting due to uh, my day job interceding with a phone call. So if you could tell us where we're at and what brings us to this point tonight. And who might you be asking? <laughs> Whoever wants to answer it. Jeff, if you want to take over the screen and then maybe Chris, if you want to start with that. Uh, say that again, Michelle, sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so the last time um, we brought in uh, what is a uh, what was a modified design from the previous uh, look that had been uh, submitted, and what they tried to do uh, is I explained the last time is what they tried to do is to <clears throat> kind of get rid of that funky look, modern type style that they had. Uh, and tried to come in with a more contemporary design that fitted fit in more with um, the area and try to build in some architectural architectural features to make the building a little more uh, aesthetically appealing uh, and things like that. So if you're looking at the, um, and I'm going back and forth, but yeah, if you're looking at the elevations, um, from the last time to this time, uh, there was a concern raised about the uh, pitched roof component because uh, initially that had been removed uh, and uh, the request was made to see if we could incorporate that in some way. Uh, and so taking the Wendy's kind of as an example, uh, they went back and kind of incorporated, uh, as you're looking at this elevation, uh, a pitched roof component that I believe goes around at least three sides. Uh, can't remember if it goes around all four, but um, yeah, I think the only side that's not on is the drive-through window side. So it's got three sides of it that has this pitched roof, pitched roof component built into it, but still maintains uh, some of those bump outs and carve outs to kind of keep that architectural feature in the front of it. Um, uh, so it doesn't just look like one long building. Uh, it tries to pop out some of these things to make it look a little more distinctive. So uh, in addition to that, um, trying to think of what the, some of the other issues that we went back and looked through. Um, if you're looking at the uh, um, site plan, and in, in, I don't know which one's better to look at, uh, Michelle, whether it's the sign one or the uh, overall, yeah, that one right there will work for now. Um, there were some concerns raised about the drive-through itself. Uh, and so what they tried to do is to build in some curbage uh, around that drive-through. So there was uh, uh, less interference with the traffic flow around uh, the site. Um, they did look at trying to make it one way, but uh, just for purposes of truck flow and things like that, they wanted to keep the two-way maintained. Um, to try to maintain uh, the parking, they did uh, move some of that parking to the back part of the lot, um, which is on the, the northern section. So you'll see the addition of some spaces up there. I think they moved the, the uh, trash enclosure up in that area as well. Um, but uh, again, try to carve off or separate a little bit that um, uh, drive-through area uh, based upon those concerns and I think they uh, incorporated some landscaping into that as well to kind of make it a little more distinctive um, 
Uh, I'm trying to think what else we talked about. The monument sign, uh, they did not reduce the sign size. Um, I know that was a concern, uh, but they did move it back uh, to 24 feet uh, from the right-of-way line to uh, eliminate uh, some variance requests and also to try to move it back uh, because of the concerns regarding the sign. So that was kind of their compromise in, in terms of trying to address that concern while at the same time it, they think they've reached the limit of, of how small they can make that sign and still keep everything on it that looks uh, halfway decent. So um, trying to think of what else. Uh, the chicken, uh, they have eliminated the chicken from the uh, drive through overhead bar. Uh, so that I think is sign M that has been removed. And they picked one uh, for the S sign. They'd like to keep that sign, but they did eliminate the chicken from that one. And they just have a Popeye's inner sign and that's uh, indicated at the entrance to the drive-through uh, at S5. Um, I know there was some concerns about just some of the uh, proportionality. They did go through and check that. Uh, so they made sure that everything is on the plans as proportional as they can make it. Um, so um, trying to think. In terms of uh, the variances and divergences, what we've tried to do is minimize those as much as possible. So uh, I think we were successful in eliminating, um, I think there were some that we had to add and some that we eliminated, but um, went through and worked with Jeff uh, kind of up to the up to the last minute uh, to try to get the development text uh, in the in the shape that uh, we think would be appropriate going forward. So we've incorporated basically taken the development text from uh, the existing zoning, uh, reproduced that uh, in the new text and added the corresponding parts that are specific to the Turkey Hill development. Um, in terms of the divergences, uh, they're asking for the two monument signs uh, for the LED lighting. Um, I think there's a technical one on the general development standards. There's a uh, maximum square footage for monument signs at 36 square feet. Uh, on one, of the, the pricing sign is at 49.67 square feet per side. And I think the other one is just above uh, 36 at 36.67 square feet. Uh, so that one's close, but not uh, technically within the limit. Um, on the general signs themselves, uh, talking with Jeff, uh, we just decided to request two main divergences uh, for a number of colors, sizes of lettering, number of fonts. That goes all to, as you recall, our previous discussions regarding uh, the branding. Uh, and it allows uh, 10 colors uh, for each sign and then eight sizes of lettering, uh, eight types of lettering. Uh, and that's limited to just those two signs. It's not to any, any others and then any other limitations would apply um, to any other signs. Uh, there was a technical require or divergence for the brick base for the monument signs because uh, uh, there was some discussion about whether uh, the, uh, well, whether it should be brick or the uh, more stone, uh, base that uh, comply or is consistent with the materials on the front of the building. Uh, I think the consensus was is that the stone was preferred so we need a technical divergence for that and then uh, another technical divergence because the uh, development standards table requires extension of that base uh, to extend underneath the uh, green pop-out element uh, on the monument signs. And I think the consensus was is that that would look a little funky. So everyone seemed to be fine with the uh, stone base just being under the main portion of the of the monument signs. And then there's another technical um, uh, divergence required because <clears throat> uh, the if you go back to the elevation, Michelle, Yes, on that one right there, uh, mainly uh, due to, and I, and I could not get an exact height uh, on all three of those signs, uh, 
prior to tonight because we had some uh, we actually had a change in the sign company. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's now Federal Heath as opposed to Cummings. Um, there's a the, the there's a height limitation of 20 feet uh, that was in the previous uh, uh, zoning text, and the EG group sign uh, is in the neighborhood of that 28 foot nine inches. Uh, and so there's a technical divergence to allow wall signs up to that height uh, to accommodate that sign. And it appears that the Turkey Hill and the Popeye sign would probably either be close to that 20 feet or just above it. Uh, so that would uh, cover those two signs as well. Um, I'm trying to think if I, Jeff, is there anything else you can think of that I'm missing? Uh, not from not really from last week. No, I think that's pretty much what's happened from the last time to this time. We did. Um, there was some questions I think brought up about the air machine. So that's shown on uh, the sign plan at X uh, should be the last page of the sign plan. Uh, and I think that's I think that's pretty much it. So I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have. I like the new sight lines on the building, to be honest. I actually like the, the pitched roof component. I, I told uh, the project manager that that aesthetically it, appe it, 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 it appeals a little bit more. Oh, the other thing I was... They actually added that pitch component to um, the canopy as well. So, I'm trying to think. How does the board still feel about that arrow through the drive through? They got rid of the chicken, but they still have that arrow. Was this a. Was this something from last time? I don't remember any discussion of the, as was that the last time. Yep. Yeah, we we talked about that arrow. There was a really funky blues playing saxophone chicken right there <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> uh, they still have the arrow though. The arrow is fine. I can live with the arrow. I'm just glad the chicken's gone. <laughs> Sorry, he's he's completely gone from the site. So yeah, <laughs> except for the except for the drive through. No, I appreciate how I I honestly appreciate how they they incorporated that chicken minimally and and their logo throughout. And I I honestly do like the new sight lines on the roof. To be honest with you, with the bump outs and the, and the uh, the new screening. Yeah, and that pitch is a 12-12 pitch. Um, I think they looked at trying to do a 12-6, but it was a little little funky. And so the 12-12 is the maximum that's permitted under table two. I think it works because um, it follows the code. It adds a little variety. Right. Um, it blends the two together. Can you explain to me again, what is the purpose of the striping on the back side of the curb on the north side of the building outside of the drive through? I was wondering about that as well. Striping on the, make sure I'm. Uh, it's on the site plan by Prime A. It's it, for the truck, plan, yeah, truck plan movement. There's some striping that's shown there, but the truck isn't actually in there. I wondered if it was a loading zone, but it, it's just. It's up uh, like um, north of the curb. Yeah, hold on a second. It's on the, is it on the truck plan? Yeah, we're looking at it right now. See the, the striping? I'm going back and forth. Yeah, that striping right there. What is that for? Is that a loading zone? Uh, oh, this right behind the. You know, quite honestly, I don't know. I don't know that it's 100% necessary. Um, like, where is their loading zone? They don't have a loading zone. 
Because if you look at the truck plan, the truck plan is outside of that. And, you know. That could very well be what that is. Uh, because if you see the, um, there is a five foot carve out in between the curbing. And then it goes straight to, there's a door on the back of the building right there. I understand, but the, if you look at the truck plan, the truck plan doesn't even come close to that loading zone. It, it, it's north of there. So that's odd. That's very odd to me as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm just telling you based upon, I mean, it's an educated guess. Um, I assume that's probably the, the, the loading area uh, <laughs> trying to pull up. Hold on one second. <laughs> they got well, room for trucks to get around while there's a truck in the loading zone. So, yeah, and and that's obviously that truck plane. You know, that's not exactly where the truck's going to be at all times. But um, I was trying to see, looking at. I mean, they say they sell diesel, but they don't have room for like like trucks to get in there for diesel. You know, if you look at the truck plan, the truck plan goes completely around the site, not even at the dispense gas dispensaries and the truck doesn't go into that loading zone so it, yeah it, my again uh my assumption is is that this is the truck plan for the loading and unloading of the the store itself because if you go to the floor plan for the um for the store you can actually see in the where that door is that i i, mm -hmm. I indicated uh, that opens into the storage area for the store. So it, it opens right into um, and it's at the right off of where the Cinnabon storage is, where the, the C store cooler is, where the C store storage is. Um, so it, I don't know that they did the truck plan for the fuel. And I, I just don't know for sure. Um, you know, generally they try to do a, a general truck plan just to show that they can get trucks in and out of there. So, so at the end of the day, that truck may end up very well, you know, sitting on that uh, hatched area. It's just showing you that there's enough room for the truck to go in and out of there. <clears throat> that area seems very necessary to me because of the, the, what's forced as the in and out for this whole light. There is lot, this whole lot, there is no front entrance. Everybody's got to come in and out through the back. Right. So, so that little safety zone there at the back door where loading is, getting to the dumpster, the employee parking seems to me to be necessary. Yeah, my only comment is, is that if you look at the revised truck plan and the circulation through the site, the truck is on the northern portion outside of the loading zone. So how is it going to be in that loading zone? Right, and, that, and that's my point. It, it, this is not a plan that is, like that truck is not necessarily just gonna, it's just showing, they do this plan so they can show you that there's enough room for the truck to maneuver the site. I got you. So okay. It, it's, it, it very well is likely that that truck, when it's doing loading and unloading, is going to be sitting in that hatch spot. I it just wants, okay. it just, it just wants to be able, they just wanted to be able to show you that there's enough room, you know, that they can get trucks in and out of there and it's not going to cause, you know, a huge problem for them to access the site and get out of it. Okay. And, and Dustin, that, that will all be figured out with the fire department and the county engineer's yep. office when they finalized because this site plan might still change <laughs> the biggest thing we're looking at here is just the signage divergences that they're seeking oh sorry my engineer's back <laughs> <laughs> <It's Sorry>. okay <laughs> so. focus focus <laughs> No, I, I appreciate that they provided the sign for the air as well, like we discussed last time. Yeah. And, and then the other thing, you go back to that one that one photo you just showed right there. So those shutters are truly to scale. 
Like that's the other uh, thing that we talked about. To the best of my knowledge. Okay, that, that, that was that, that was the one. Last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they reduced the lighting as well. The lighting looks much smaller than it was before. Yeah, that, I, that was one of the things I told them to do was to go back and, and take a look at the scaling. Uh, yeah. Just so, I mean, obviously, you know, it's not going to be a hundred percent, but you know, as close as they can get it from a proportionality standpoint, I asked them to go back and take a look at that. So. Yeah, it looks good. I don't have any other comments at this time. Um, can you do me a favor and scroll through the various signage? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's the pricing sign um, based upon what we were told about the square footage. The total square footage of just the signage components is you know, 49.67. Uh, the limitation, as I understand, is at least for Monument signs is 36 square feet pursuant to the current text. Uh, and then again, what we tried to do with this one because of your your specific concern was to move it back to that 24 square foot. So it didn't create a separate variance under the zoning resolution. So it's only the one divergence rather than change that entire matrix um, and just leave that document in place as it is now, we just asked for a divergence uh, to that requirement as it's contained in that matrix as part of the existing development plan. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, pushing it back since you did reduce the size. At least it's not as prominent as it could be. And Chris, uh, yes. since we're speaking on this, uh, yeah. if you do the calculations on the square footage yep. for this for this sign, it comes up as 49.727 square feet. Okay, and that's the thing I was gonna you know get with you about. I don't know what the technical, yeah, you know, based upon your calculation, how you do it as opposed to how they did it. And there's actually there's there's four signs that are a little bit different than what you have shown. Okay, but when you add all of them up, they they still have the same total as what you have. Oh really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, but that that is that's one of the stipulations that would be okay. on the recommendation. Yeah, no, that's here. fine. You know, my biggest concern was trying to get underneath that total square footage yep. requirement, if we could. So, so while we're on this sign, I, I think, uh, Chris, you know, the base we pretty much covered last meeting and, and Mark, right. just for your knowledge, we, we discussed, you know, the stone base, which, you know, matches the building material. I think the majority of the board was, was good with that um, and not doing a brick as the, the code's uh, states and then the the little uh, wing or, or you know the green part of the sign hanging over. I, I think again the, the board is all uh, in agreement that 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 we didn't need to extend the base over. That would maybe make things look a little bit uh, uh, out of place if we did that. So for this sign, I think we're good. I um, I, I believe unless there was anything that anybody else had on this one i mean you know christine i know that you know we discussed moving that sign back and you guys did that so that that's uh i think you know that was a step in the right direction so and, and jeff just as a clarifying question for me just as we're talking about this one they have these little notes federated federal health or heath had these little notes in the lower right corner if you see it's got the boxes yeah right there mm -hmm. i i assume you don't want those on there since we would commit to this. I asked them to take it off. That's why I was curious. It was one of the things that uh, McCarthy was had raised previously. I just didn't know if that, since it was one we were gonna to commit to for enforcement purposes. Yeah, I mean, I would take them off. Okay. For the board, Not for the trustees. Yeah, just for the trustees. Right. All right, Jeff, you want to scroll to the next one? I think similar similar notes for this one. I mean, the base and um, the flange and everything I think is good. I don't, 
I don't know if anybody else had comments on this. And yep. I believe also this we one step back. Yeah, we, we, yeah, and we talked about that. I, I like I like the stone that they're using. It matches the building. Yep. No, the stone is fine. I got no issues with that. I got no issues with the little green accent piece. It's all fine. Okay. And this is the one that's on the front of the building, just so you have some correlation to it. This is this would be the highest one until they get. Yeah, and that, that's a sign we've discussed in the past. <laughs> right. Corporate goes on top. Right. Yep. <laughs> top dog. And then this is on the front of the building, I think on the right hand side. Yeah, and, and if if you guys are gonna approve the divergence for the 28 feet nine inches, then these signs all are in compliance. I mean, we don't have to review these to change them as they will meet the height of the building. Yeah, those look fine. Yeah, and I have no problem. I think it would look kind of weird if you lowered those signs. Um, can you go back to the canopy? Because I had a question. You had mentioned something about how they were going to change the canopy to. Um... Yeah, I, th they mentioned to me, and, and I can certainly confirm this for purposes of uh, the trustees as well, but they mentioned to me that they were building in the um, um, pitched roof component with the canopy. Okay. How is the signage going to work with that in the pitched roof? Oh, the pitched roof is just going to sit on top of it. Okay, so it's going to sit on top of like the white band. Yes, that's okay. my understanding. So, yep, that'll look good. Yeah, um, because I think, yeah, I think I would like the hipped roof um, to sort of blend in with the building. Yep, and I think that was the reason why they were doing it. <laughs> so, so it would look more compatible <clears throat> between the two. All right, now do we need to add that um, since it's not in this document? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it it would just have to meet the standards that's in the original text. And I don't, I'm not familiar with the how uh, canopies fit with, um, you know, buildings and stuff. Are they? Yeah, and and I don't have a problem committing to that as long as we could put a clarify, just so you know, and clarify the the addition of the uh, pitch roof to the canopy. Um, and add to if if possible. Okay. I don't have a problem committing to that. Okay. Because he he did tell me that he, I'm telling you he did tell me that they were doing that. So. I don't. Yeah, Jeff. I I don't know if it talks specifically about the can what the canopy needs to look like. So we may want to add that as a stipulation. I mean, I would prefer it if possible to have the, the hip there, but. Yeah, and, and when Manny and I talked, others. <laughs> yeah, when, when Manny and I talked about it, we talked about it because yeah, I mentioned to him that um, you guys would probably love that uh, because it kind of blends in with what Gitco did at the corner. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, from my perspective, that was an added added incentive as, you know, to try to you know, build consensus with you guys uh, to get approval. So, so again, like I said, I'm happy to, to clarify that with him and, and add it if, if reasonably possible, so. But I'm sure in our, in our effort, because I, I just got the revised sign plan at like 10 a.m. this morning. So um, Jeff and I had been working off a, a similar version, but uh, just having some updated calculations and things like that. Um, 
and I'm sure that was one of the things that he did not get the sign company to uh, add to their elevation. So. Are there any other thoughts on the canopy or should we just move on to the next signage? Not, I think that's good. Yeah, to add the, you know, mansard or the um, pitched roof on top. I think just having that and I think everything else looks good. So this one just shows you what the uh, fuel pumps will look like. The menu board again. And so I have a question. Did you get rid of sort of the um, preview menu board or the select menu? Yes, the, the, the sign that was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that was yeah, a little- Yeah, it's, okay. it's gone. All right, <laughs> so. thank you. Yeah, the canopies, this one's pretty basic. Yeah, so the only thing on the Popeyes S sign is I've asked them uh, to add the, uh, the lumen, the 3000K lumens mm -hmm. note as well as I, on the previous signs, I think they didn't included uh, kind of a, a little bit of an elevation to show you kind of how the sign looks, you know, in terms of, uh, yeah, if you go back one more, uh, no, nope. go back to that. If they kind of show the profile of the sign as opposed to just, you know, the straightforward, but just to give as much detail as they could uh, regarding that particular sign, I asked them to add that. So they got me what they could get me by today. So <laughs> that 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 this elevation might change a little bit, but it's not going to be much different than what what you're seeing. And that this sign has replaced all the other saxophone. Yes. So there's correct? there's there's no longer any multiple choice. This is the okay. choice they have selected. All right. Perfect. Because before I think we had like I don't know five or six signs. Yep. Yeah, chickens so, on them, and I prefer this one. Yeah, so what what they chose to do is just go with the branded name, and and you know kind of minimize it. And again, you know I think they got rid. I know one of the other issues was the uh, grain. I think they've changed that to a solid color now. Um, if I'm looking at that right. Yes, I prefer this one to the others. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Actually, they did not change the grain portion of it on the background. I know that had been raised as a concern. I just blew it up a little bit. So um, if there is still that concern, this will be in an, a backlit light. So that grain will pop out a little bit. If there's still that concern, I can ask them to change that to a solid solid color. No, Chris, I think I think this looks fine. Okay. And this is what they asked for, so <laughs> yeah. But I know that we had talked about that the last time, so. Mm -hmm. Now I'm okay with it. I'm just I'll say I. This one I think I, is easier to read than the the chicken. Sure. No, and I'm fine with this. It's just your basic. Um, I think we should um, 
get final dimensions for it. <laughs> I, I know it's probably not going to be oh. that large, but right now there's no dimensions whatsoever. Right. On the air sign part? Exactly. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can get you that. I mean, I can, I can sort of scale it looking at how big the <laughs> machine is, but still. Is this the only sign that doesn't have dimensions yet? Uh, I think so. Because this was, this is the new, th this is a brand new sign. So I had not seen it before. So I take it this is also not in your signage calculations? Uh, no, it is not. Okay, so that would all need to be finalized before right. it goes. Right. So, I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a stipulation we would have to add to, so, um, you know, provide, provide dimensions of so air sign. Yeah, and it, it, it won't be, I think we're significantly below the maximum, so um, it certainly should not cause any other divergences to be required. I have not seen any gas station that have applied for a sign for their air machine. Yeah, that was the other thing. I mean, we've never reviewed these before. Oh, okay. Well, I but I, that's up to the board to decide if that needs to be included. Um, well, I'm happy to if you would like. So I think most ga gas stations don't have signage for their air machine. <laughs> It seems sort of hit or miss. Well, like I said, it's not a problem for me to get the dimensions and I it just given what appears to be the size of the sign, it's not gonna, it would not appear to require any separate variance or, or take us over the limit for the maximum square footage. So, I mean, whatever you guys want, want us to do, we're, we're happy to do. I don't even think it needs to be in there, especially if, the zoning staff's not been looking at air signs at all on all the other gas stations in the township. It's it's going to be de minimis compared to the, to the signage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it if it's something huge that we see, we'll probably say something. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but anything huge would become at that point silly and probably not help your business any yeah. so no yeah. yeah i don't think they want it to be larger than a machine so <laughs> let's hope not so <laughs> i have yeah i'll just defer to the zoning staff if if it hasn't been something that's been reviewed before um and if um they'll um take a look at obviously if it's uh oversized for this purpose yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Mark on this one. We, we haven't reviewed these in the past. I, I think we can exclude this. And I think the only remaining one is the Cinnabon sign, which we haven't changed. It. Yeah, I think that's the last sign. On your sign schedule, this is listed twice, just so you're aware. Oh, is it? Yep. I apologize for that. It's up towards the top and then at the bottom of it. So. Huh. If that's it, I don't have any further comments. And we, we did receive a, a, an email with some concerns about the Turkey Hill, um, but their concerns were traffic related um, access in and out of it with uh, the traffic light being there at Power Road um, and backing up and how the ease, how hard it'll be to get out of there. Uh, but we responded to her inquiries and uh, she told me thanks for the information and she was glad that we got back with her. And Jeff, most of, if, you're, most, yeah. if, if you're sharing that email, I don't see it. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Sorry to cut you off. Oh, you're good. Nope. 
and she was concerned about where the dumpsters were. And at that time we had two different site plans showing where the dumpsters were. So I let her know where they both could have been and that the final site plan is all considered with the fire department and the county engineer's office. Um, and that the dumpsters would have the enclosures that are the same material as the building and are taller than the dumpster so you won't see them. And then along with the traffic flows up with the county engineer who decides where the access is. So just wanted you aware of this. Yeah, if they lived there since 92, they've definitely seen some changes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, does the board have any other additional comments? Um, I don't. Do you want to add that stipulation on there? I, I'll, I'll write it later if that's all right. I'll, I'll add to it since it's on. Okay, so are we adding? I, I don't have word on here right now. Two stipulations, one. Or so we're going to eliminate the air sign. And um, the hipped roof or the. Um, Mansard roof on the canopies. Jeff, I'll, if you share the screen, I'll take over. Is, is there a word form of the recommendation? I'll, I can write it in. Yep, it's it should be in the file. It's the draft one. The la and the last stipulation would be removal of the air sign. Is that right? So you just want us to get rid of it completely? I would. I mean, it's not part of the sign package. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you want me to eliminate it from the project completely <laughs> or just the package? No. <laughs> just the eliminate package. from the package. Got it. <laughs> OK. Yeah, because if it stays in the package, it needs to be dimensioned. So it's easier to right. remove it. I got you. I understand. Alrighty. Um, yeah, Jeff, I'll take over the screen. Yeah. Um, I, I just want the board to see this since, you know, we're all new at this these days. <laughs> and I am impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <'Cause laughs> let me tell you, having I also do a little bit of litigation stuff and trying to do remote depositions at court hearings is is a trip. So uh, we've had we've learned from the best. So <laughs> so this is the recommendation Jeff and I drafted uh, for the application this evening. I believe it addresses all the um, the con the concerns and as far and we do have four stipulations that would be included with this recommendation. Okay. Is everybody okay with those stipulations? Yep. Is that you, Chris? No, uh, no that was the board. I'm no, fine with the stipulations. Okay. <laughs> everybody else okay with them? Yep. I'm good. We got everything? If so, I have a motion for recommendation approval of zoning application ZON-19-02. So moved. Now you got to read it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. You volunteered. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, motion. 
by Mr. Doherty conditionally recommend to the Board of Trustees the approval of zoning application ZON-19-02 of the TH Midwest Incorporated. The applicant requesting an amendment of the signs provisions of the Green Meadows Plaza Plan Commercial and Office District application 17986. The version of the application to be approved consisting of those materials submitted by the applicant in a hard and digital copy booklet also titled Green Meadows Plaza, the pages of which are stamped received with Orange Township zoning above and June 30th, 2020 and superimposed over received by Orange Township zoning development plan as modified by those stipulations listed in the statement stipulations attached here to those attachment A prior to the consideration of this application by the Board of Tr Township Trustees. And if those do not fully comply with the same, the recommendation of the Zoning Commission is denial of zoning application ZON-19-02 of the TH Midwest Incorporated. Second. By? Second motion, uh, yeah, motion seconded by Mr. Bahavich. Mr. Bahavich. All right. <laughs> Um, motion to uh, conditionally recommend approval of zoning application number zone-19-02 of TH Midwest Incorporated, um, Mr. Doherty, uh, second by Mr. Pahovich. Uh, those voting, Mr. Jewell? Yes. Mr. Pahovich? Yes. Ms. Trebellis? Yes. Mr. McNulty? Yes. And Mr. Doherty? Yes. Motion carries. We did it. Already. <laughs> the application that would not go away. Yes, I know. I'm sure you're getting, everyone is quite happy about that. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate really it. Glad about it. We'll have a Popeyes in the neighborhood. Hey, there you go. So I, I will get cracking on it so we can have it there sooner rather than later. So yeah, you owe us some Cinnabons. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I appreciate Thank it, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Take care. Um, so, Dustin, we do have a full quorum for the next application, so we uh, do, uh, do not need your attendance for that. You're more than welcome to stay, but we will not consider you for the next roll call. <laughs> okay, I understand. Thank you for your participation in Turkey Hill, though. <laughs> sure, thanks. Um, I'll go back to sharing my screen. So Mark, I guess we can, if it's okay, we can move on to the second part of this hearing. Yes, please. Um, since we, and I forgot to add this on here, so I apologize, but since we uh, did technically have, we opened this hearing up um, the last time we met, we do need to uh, bring this back from recess. And that's okay. resolution here. We have a motion to come back from recess for consideration of resolution 20-218 initiating text amendments to the Orange Township Zoning Resolution. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, uh, motion to come back from recess for resolution uh, to tw number 20-218. By Mr. Bahavich, second by Ms. Trebellis, those voting. Mr. Jewell? Yes. Mr. Bahavich? Yes. Mr. Dove? Yes. Uh, Ms. Trebellis? Yes. And Mr. McNulty? Yes. All right. Um, so, Mark, if I can just start or. Go ahead. All right. Um, so regional planning um, did hear this application or the, these amendments at their meeting hearing last week. I just sent that out to you today. So if you guys didn't have a chance to review it, I'm happy to read through this, if that's what you would like. Um, you can just hit the high points. Okay. Um, yeah, so so again, there was this request um, is um, really two big points um, as far as uh, changing or amending our zoning resolution. Um, the first bullet point that's mentioned here is to sections 12.06 subsection M 13.06 subsection M and 14.07 subsection P. Uh, and the text amendment would be the outside display of materials, merchandise, or products for advertising, merchandising, or storage purposes is prohibited, except for materials, merchandise, or products that are required by federal, state, or local laws, rules, or regulations. Um, the second change, uh, the second big change is to section 21.05C. 
This is in regards to the swimming pools, um, this, which the text would, is proposed to state all swimming pools or the property upon which such swimming pools are located shall be walled or fenced to fully enclose the swimming pool and prevent uncontrolled access to the swimming pool. Said wall or fence should, should not be less than five feet in height and may include the wall of a building or other structure shall be of such construction as to not allow uncontrolled access under or through the wall or fence it shall be maintained in good condition with all entry or access points having functional functioning locks. Swimming pools that do not meet the definition of a structure as defined in this resolution are exempt from this requirement. That's really that last sentence that's being changed. Um, and then Scott makes, or regional planning makes the comment, um, uh, and this is more specifically for the pools that, you know, the reference uh, to whom methods of controlling access supplies by individuals from the street or adjacent properties, as well as expanded language regarding the extent to which the fence can control access. Additionally, the proposed changes includes an exemption for pools, which do not meet the definition as opposed to only accepting waiting pools. So these are really for those like kiddie pools or those up above ground temporary pools that you can easily move around. Um, staff is in agreement with the proposed changes, but wants to make sure that Orange Township is aware of some of the issues uh, from the proposed change changes. Um, and I, this is I, as far as the first um, the first amendments in regards to the outside sales of propane takes. They, the regional planning was not didn't have any concerns with them, but he, they did have some concerns as far as the pool language goes. Um, the, the new language surrounding which pools are exempt would not allow inflatable pools some of which can be fairly large without requiring fencing as they do not have a fixed location on the ground or attached to something having a fixed location on, on the ground. Under current language, this, these pools would require a fence. So it, essentially our code reads that any type of water, if any water body you would have out in the back of your yard would have, would basically require a five foot fence. Um, the reference to functioning locks suggests that the fence point of access would need a lock whether it would be a combination or key, as opposed to a lock in the sense of a mechanism which pre prevents uncontrolled access. A latch or handle would prevent unintentional entering, but would be absent a, a lock in the traditional sense. Staff recommends rephrasing to remove any possible ambiguity. Um, so that second bullet point, that's the same language we've had. Uh, we didn't look at that, but that's something we can consider this evening. Um, but staff did recommend conditional approval of these amendments. Uh, to the Orange Township uh, Zoning Commission, um, and that that was that that's regional planning's. Um, let me go back to. I did draft a recommendation for this evening, and just to give you um, some background on um, the the pressure on this, um, since the pool, <laughs> the orange uh, swimming pool has been closed for this season. Um, Jeff and I have been completely inundated with calls about having temporary swimming pools and we've just had a challenge on um, allowing them or permitting them in this interim just because of the way our code is read. So that's why we wanted to bring this to the Zoning Commission. Um, if you have any questions on the outdoor sales of propane tanks, um, I have Jeff is here to answer that as he, he was the one that kind of initiated that idea. Um, and that's mainly because um, propane tanks um, cannot be um, kept indoors. <laughs> so, um, so we wanted. Can you, can you go back? I'm sorry. Hold on. I was reading. I've had, I've had a question about the one language, and I just trying to to get it here. Outside display of materials, merchandise, or products for advertising, merchandising, or storage purposes, it's prohibited except for materials. Merchandise or products, yeah, it just moved. Oh, are you looking at this though? Well, yeah. No, that's the old one, right? Um. Unless they're required. Yeah, yeah that's go, right. Go, yeah, go, go. Okay. They're right there. Just, just stop, 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 stop. Okay. Different materials, merchandise, or products that are required to be displayed. Hard to be. Is that is that the way the language was in? what regional planning wrote? No, this is what, um, we had the prosecutor's office write the language for us, um, and that's what they wrote. Okay. It, so it, it does, I think the required to be displayed part was not in what regional planning had in their document. So I was confused, but if, if this is the language, that's okay. This is the language, yes. 
Is this just for propane? Is that why we're doing this? This is uh, what kind of sparked it, yeah. Or Jeff, yeah, the, yeah. The, the propane sparked it uh, with the Friendship Kitchen going in. Uh, we had inquiries about people had stopped there while they were building and asking if they were going to sell propane. Uh, so their propane dealer contacted us and their development tech says no outside storage, um, which is what our code says. But then when we looked into it and we contacted the prosecutor's office about it, uh, he did some digging and all the gas stations have this. Menards has this. Uh, most of those locations have this language that's in our general code saying that uh, the materials are prohibited. Uh, so it was kind of either well, try to make an exemption to allow that um, or you're going to open a big can of worms to to try to enforce that because legally we, propane has to we, be outside. Can't we limit it to propane tanks sales? I mean, are we opening this to anything that, uh, okay, mulch. Does mulch have to be displayed outside per federal law? I don't know what federal law would prohibit mulch from being moved inside. Yeah, but what about um, like firewood? Local laws, rules, or regulations. I mean, we could have a regulation on a mulch bag that says it should be stored outside. Well, I, I think the idea is we can't set a rule that violates anything above us. Mm hmm and all of those are above us. Yeah, and, and according to the fire code, the propane has to be outside. So that was kind of one of the contacts because they actually contacted the fire department and the fire department told me it was okay. Um, and then they contacted us. And so we kind of put a hold on it for a little bit while we were going through this process. I just... I, I understand the propane. I just know Home Depot is going to be coming up with ways now to store things outside. They they already do it. They do it every day. Well, they 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 actually I believe had an amendment to allow yeah. for that. No, I mean mulch or flowers or tractor trailers or truck. I mean, I mean. Is the Speedway in Orange Township, or mm -hmm. that's at, at Old State oh. and Polaris Parkway? No, that is mm -hmm. Columbus. Columbus, because mm -hmm. I mean that's close enough, and they they have it outdoors. Um, I, I, mean, I, I I don't think we should be putting Orange Township. This is a disadvantage. I I completely understand the propane tank. This does not say propane tanks. This is anything that's required to be displayed outside. So who's yeah, going to? That's 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 stuff that's only it's only stuff that's required. Yeah. So if they come back to us and say it legally, if by federal, state, something above us says it has to be outside, then. Like if, if there is some new federal law that says mulch has to be outside, then they would need to show that to us for us to permit it. Okay, I just see it coming. <laughs> but I, I think that's worded and it's limiting enough, you know, that are required to be displayed outside. I, I, I can't see how that loses really. So, I mean, is, I'm okay with it. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of what else could be required outside. I don't know, charging stations in the future, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that leaves the zoning department to have to be aware of what the new laws and requirements are regarding new items. Well, they can always deny it and put the onus on the, the requester to prove that there's another law that says it has to be outside. Okay. That's what I mean. I mean, could could do do we even have the ability to say that it couldn't be done if a, the federal government says it's required to be outside? Well, you we could sell them the know that you can't sell it. Yeah. But you that then that's putting local businesses 
behind the eight ball compared to yes, what's yeah. just down the street. Yeah. Well, that's I, why I, I said I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with this as well. I'm good with it. Okay, um, so based on, uh, so that has to be changed in a few sections here, which is outline. I kind of, I try to do it similar to the last um, zoning amendment we did, which I think might have been last year or the year before. Um, so I reflect, I did that, I did similar to Mike McCarthy. Um, so the blue shows the changes for each of the pages in the zoning resolution. Um, so this is changed and I believe um, sorry for scrolling. One, two, it, three sections that it has to be modified in. Um, but I, I think the swimming pool might be the biggest conversation. So really the, and Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but the only thing that really changed is this last sentence, right? From our current... Uh no, um, we did change things. Okay. Yeah, um, the fence fully enclosed the swimming pool or walled. Uh, that's um, we spoke with the prosecutor's office and went over it, and they had some cases where they had a neighbor try to argue that the there was a pool that didn't meet the code because it said it had to be had a fence around it, and three sides of it had a fence, and the other side was the house. Um, so the neighbor tried to argue that the house wasn't a fence, so it didn't meet the permit. So uh, they try to include all of that uh, with putting the wall or fenced and then the, the having the locks on it. Um, same you have the um, Delaware code, because generally if you're using the house as a wall or a fence, you need to have an alarm on your back door. So presumably a child could walk out of your back door into the pool area yeah. um, without it being, if your back door is unlocked. Right, so um, there's a few things with that. Um, I've, I've, seen, I've seen you've come across that before. Um, yeah, and in, in the, in the Delaware County Building Department will have to enforce that. They have their own unique building code. And we talked to, I did talk to Genoa and Liberty Township since this was coming um, pretty hot at us. Um, uh -huh. And um, they, Genoa and Liberty, well, Liberty has similar standards as what we're proposing, except they do, they would require a safety cover instead of a, a, a fence. Mm -hmm. um, but with, um, with Genoa, they kind of rely on the HOAs for um, the standards in regards to like their temp those temporary pools. But any in-ground swimming pool with this text here will still require that five foot fence. Um, I know Liberty, I'm pretty sure Liberty got rid of the five foot fence requirement, but they have that automatic safety cover. And Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong if I'm saying this, but I believe that was what they did. Yeah, they kind of followed the counties, the county. Yeah, so they, they both code. follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they both follow Delaware counties, but um, we just thought we wanted to just change this just, you know, for those even like a little dog pool would technically need a fence. <laughs> mm -hmm. If it's over well, 18 inches. So I mean, any, anything that was over or under 18 inches in depth was exempt. I mean, how many pools are over 18 inches, but you don't want to enforce against? Oh God, 100? Uh, I was gonna say, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Is, there, is, is, there a, is there a different number? Is there a different number? It's swimming. I mean, I see the regional planning's statement. Well, I think I lost you, Mark. Yeah, Mark, you went out for a second. What was that? Oh, no. Well, my concern is the, the line that says swimming pools that do not meet the definition of a structure. Um, there are above ground pools that, well, my HOA doesn't allow them in our neighborhood, but yeah. others do that are quite large and quite deep. They can be up to six feet deep. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, they don't require a fence based on this resolution because it's that, not a structure. Is that correct? That's correct, but the county would require them to have an enclosure. 
Okay, so if the county, so, so I, I guess it's what's confusing of what the county requires versus what we're requiring. Well, the um, county building department would supersede ours. Okay. So the county doesn't require a fence like we do for in-ground pools, but they do require that there's an enclosure. I, I don't know if you could see that language that I highlighted. Yeah, I see that. That's what I wanted to know what there was. And I know, I think Mark's connection went off. So hopefully okay. back. Um, so the enclosure could either be a fence or could it be like, um, I think you said Genoa or Liberty has a cover. Yes. But on, I, I don't care. <laughs> I, my guess, my concern is I don't want someone to put up, you know, a humongous pool and not have it enclosed for safety reasons. <laughs> they would be, they would violate the county buildings requirements okay. if that was the case. Mm -hmm. But doesn't a five foot above ground pool act as a five foot fence? I, I mean, how's, how's a kid gonna climb a pool wall? I mean, I could see putting a gate across the steps to go up to get into it or something. Well, most mm -hmm. of those pools that large have um, ladders. I had yeah. a, I have one of those pools and he had a, a ladder. Um, and I don't even remember if he had a fence or not because he lived out in the country, but you know, um, but I think he had a cover to try to keep uh, for safety purposes. And I'll be honest, my kids have a wading pool out in the backyard. Um, and I think it's about 18 inches, but I'm not sure because <laughs> I haven't measured it. <laughs> so. Michelle, for, for clarity on this, the, the two things that were added is the the fence, it's saying fence or wall uh, enclosure. Um, so it's including the wall in the case where, you know, the house or, or the structure and then three sides of a fence is, is, in, is considered part of the enclosure. And the mm -hmm. second part is, is the swimming pool that don't meet the definition of, of a structure uh, does not apply. Are those the two changes that yes. are made to the current code? Okay. Um, I mean, I, I would say certainly on the, on that second part, you know, swimming pools that don't meet the definition uh, of a structure um, are, are exempt, which to me makes sense adding that part. Um, the, the wall or fence, uh, I, I think I agree. I mean, I agree with that as well. I, I think that you know, it's silly to argue that if someone had a, a, a fence, you're going around their pool and, and then they use one side as their, their house is not being enclosed. I, I think um, at least my interpretation is that the safety is more or less from, from outside uh, people, you know, that, that may, you know, I, I don't, whatever the words they use here, um, it, uh, it was uncontrolled access, I guess, is what it says. But, you know, then I see it as a protection from people, you know, that aren't, I guess, the homeowner or something, or, or maybe somebody that's, that's going through there. So, you know, I think using a, a, the house as part of the one of the four walls, or, you know, I guess, uh, structures to, to block that, I, I agree with that as well. So, I'm assuming that's that's the intent is just saying we can we can use the structure as part of one of the the sides. That's correct. Yeah. So I'm back. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> um, so, all uh, we. Oh, I'm sorry. Like ahead. you said, wall wall or building is fine with me. All access points have to have functioning locks. That's fine with me. The only question I was talking about, regional planning pointed out that. Some swimming pools might not meet the definition of structure and be quite large. Mm -hmm. We might want to be careful with just saying swimming pools. Because this, I take it is for basically in-ground pools and above ground pools do not meet the definition of a structure. We sort of talked about that Mark, while you were um, logged off. Um, 
but above ground pools would still have to comply with uh, Delaware County restrictions. Yes. And that that's that was like one of the highlights I wanted to share on the screen too, Mark. I don't know if you saw that earlier, but yeah, and I mean, you know, the above ground pools, I think that could lead up. I mean, that's a, that's a big conversation as far as safety goes. But luckily, we have the county building department to rely on that. And that's what Genoa and Liberty does too. So, yeah, and I have no problem with the side of a, a building or structure being considered a wall. It makes perfect sense that the house or you know a garage or you know pool house or whatever uh, can provide part of that enclosure. I think this is what Mark was bringing up earlier. Yes. So would, would a solution be, instead of saying swimming pools that do not meet the definition, we, we'll say a body of water that doesn't meet the definition of a structure or defined in the resolution are exempt from this requirement? Or is that is that what you were thinking, Mark? Maybe, maybe just getting rid of swimming pools and, and using some other verbiage there? Well, I, I think their, their concern was some temporary swimming pools can be quite large. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. And, you know, if this is a, supposed to be a safety feature, you know, there used to be a size limit on those swimming pools. Now we've taken the size limit off. We're just shoehorning in the definition of a structure and they may not be considered a structure. Yeah. And that's the, I mean, that would be the next step. If we were to keep the text, how this, or if we, we would keep it as it's proposed. I would like once, I would like us to revisit our definition section and maybe define that a little more too on what, but and what, what, what? Jeff and I didn't have time to do the whole definition section. We were. One of the concerns here is, is, is our definition section with the structure, what is a structure, but it also is, we don't have, we don't regulate fencing. So yeah. if we have something that's not considered a structure, we, there's no nothing for us to enforce a fence because we can't require them to file a permit for a fence because we don't regulate fencing only if it has a pool, but if it's not considered a structure and they don't even file a pool. And then the 18 inches, I know some of the other places are, are bigger. Um, I believe the one was like 36 inches or, or 24 inches. I know I have a pool that I bought that I put up this summer and I'll take it down during the winter. And those are the structures. Those are the type of pools that I know the trustees that one of the trustees that came to us about it was wanting to allow these, but HOAs have more power and can restrict those still. Whereas the trustees want this because we're getting, as Michelle said, we're getting a lot of calls and questions about, putting up one of these temporary pools just for the summer and then taking it down for the winter. According to our current code, my pool would require a five foot fence. It is a 10 foot in diameter pool that holds 24 inches of water. And according to our code, it would require a, a five foot fence around it where other codes, my township is if it's 24 inches or less, it doesn't require it. So there's no, I guess there's no, set specific size or depth of water. So this is kind of what we went with with the prosecutor's office. Okay, so the our... prosecutor's office has reviewed this and helped with the text? They essentially wrote it for us, yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and they gave us the, the concern of liability 
by allowing these portable pools not have a fence. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I did receive a complaint uh, about a pool in a backyard and they're in farm residential and it's one of these types of pools, mm -hmm. but there's no fence, but there's, since it's not a structure and knowing the trustees were push, kind of pushing for this, for this, at least for now, for these types of pools. I mean, and the question becomes how big of a temporary swimming pool are they okay with? And then how, how, at what size does it become a concern? Because, mm -hmm. because we've gone from kind of one extreme mm -hmm. to the other, yeah. you know, where first we're not allowing any of them without a fence. And now, you know, we're potentially allowing some rather large ones without a fence. So, I mean, let me, sorry, I'm trying to find my zoning resolution. Um, well, Mark, would you be more comfortable if you put in size limitations? I, what, that was what I brought up, you know, but I don't know what the proper size limitation is. That was a discussion we were just having, you know, yeah. the current says 18 inches depth. Mm -hmm. You know, Jeff was talking about 24, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. But. Oh, that's why. Yeah, I don't know either. That's why I'm asking because I, I get concerned all of a sudden when we're trying to figure out sizes of what is works and what doesn't. Um, you know, this was the concern that uh, regional planning had. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't necessarily have the answer either. I <laughs> certainly didn't give us anything. Yeah, and I was, um, I was trying to figure that out too. Uh, I mean, we what we could do. Um, I'm trying to think of how we could do this. As a stipulation for this recommendation is to consider or to consider a new maximum debt um, for the swimming pools that would be qualified to exempt from this requirement? Is that something? Yeah, I think so. Hey, maybe it's a decision that the trustees need to make. How, how big are they willing to go? Yeah. Because I think it's how deep are they willing to go? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's, the, it's the concern regional planning brought up. Yeah, I read it. I, I agreed. I don't know that I have the right answer. You know, I, I don't know what we're getting calls on or or what people are trying to get away with or not get away with. And, you know, what people, what like the fire department would consider safe or not safe. Right. Um, um, I, I don't know. I mean, or, you know, requiring, um, if they don't have a fence, having a, a safety cover or something. Like I think you said, one of the townships um, had provisions for. Or I would even think some way of um, not allowing access. So if it has a ladder, get rid of your ladder. Mm -hmm. Well, lots of those big uh, above ground pools, a lot of people, if they're there, I've seen them in rural areas where people build decks around them. Right. You know, and then, and if you had did that, if you put locks on all the entrances, would, would that be sufficient or would you have need to have a fence around that? Yeah, or you could just put a gate on the steps to the deck Yeah. that could lock. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's what a lot of people do. That's what I've seen before. And, and again, I've only seen those things in really rural areas. We have few of those here in Orange Township, but not that many. Yeah, I mean, maybe a few old ranch house areas. Um, I'm just, I'm just making, I'm writing something, sorry. Because <laughs> um, I'm wondering if like maybe, you know, the depth maximum would be based on, you know, recommendations from Orange Township Fire Department Delaware County Code Compliance.
I, I will say Genoa's um, said their practice uh, for quite a while is that uh, if the above ground pool height exceeds the height of the fence that's required, then they do not require a fence for that. Um, so if you have a six foot tall pool, you don't need a fence because the, the five foot requirement. <laughs> or how Genoa yeah. enforces it. <laughs> I'm looking online and like Home Depot sells an inflatable pool that has a depth of 48 inches, mm -hmm. which is four feet. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's starting to get pretty, pretty deep if you're concerned about, you know, safety concerns. So. And Liberties is 18 inches deep and exceeds eight feet in diameter. If it's a if meets yeah, if it's above if one of those. If someone came in and got in your pool was 48 inches deep and they drown, who's responsible? Is the homeowner of the pool responsible? Yes, I believe so. I believe so, but I think also part of that would be is like, if it, does the homeowner have a fence? Does the homeowner have a safety cover? So, so the fence and cover is there to protect the homeowner. I believe so. Yeah, but and the county will require it. I just I I can't remember what they're. Let me see if I can try to skim through it while you guys are continuing discussing. But um, I mean, I'll be honest, I have a cover pools. on my uh, kids' wading pool just so all that I don't have to drain it every weekend. To try to keep the water clear mm -hmm. but it's also to keep like animals and stuff from getting in there i feel safer <laughs> i mean most of the hoas would not allow a traditional above ground pool oh yeah right but but these inflatable ones you know they're not permanent structures they you know you take them right on down i you know, what, what are, what do you, what do they want? Cause like I said, I, I can see those going up as high as like 48 inches, that's four feet. So you know, I'm not sure what the trustees are looking for here. Do they truly just want kiddie pools exempted or do they want these bigger inflatable pools exempted too or, or not? I mean, from our discussion, it seemed like they wanted all of these portable pools that you can buy at Walmart and, and places like that that you put up during the summer and then take down for the winter that are not permanent to be exempted. Uh, and I think some of it's based on the COVID stuff. So they, they've they got a lot of inquiries like we have about putting these up for the summer since our pool's closed. Mm -hmm. um, so they're trying to, I think they're trying to kind of appease some of the residents to be able to still enjoy the summer and, and still have a pool. So, so maybe the maximum depth is 48 inches then, because that seems to be the standard. And I, and I do know some HOAs still won't allow these type because they're well, Which is ground. fine. So, I mean, but they're lower than us on the kind of the, the ladder. So, you know, if they want to be more restrictive, that's fine. Right. And there are some, we did have a HOA contact us about it and ask what our uh, policy was. And we talked to them about this changing and their their regulations say no for them. So they're still gonna keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why, cause I know like my HOA does not allow above ground pools, but they do allow kiddie pools. Is there a, like a maximum depth of that though? No, they, I don't think there is last I looked. <laughs> Because I was curious because, you know, my girls have a kiddie pool. <laughs> Sounds like the HOAs are going to take care of the problem. Um, I, I, I tend to agree to not place undue restrictions on people who may want to have temporary pools. Um, 
because you know putting a fence around it that makes it a permanent thing and that's uh, lots of people are not going to do mm -hmm. What if we just did like, I mean, I don't know if this makes it simple or more complicated, but um, where am I? Um, what if we said something that um, temporary pools, that's, you know. We could say temporary or, or say inflatable. Inflatable pools that do not meet the definition of a structure are exempt from this requirement. And I'd could, go. I'd go with inflatable. Okay. Okay. I mean, we could still ask the. I mean, if you want me to put in a stipulation to have the trustees consider a maximum depth, I'm happy to do that too. I I think saying inflatable kind of puts a de facto maximum depth on it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that maximum appears to be around 48 inches, from what I can tell. So yeah. you know, maybe that's the answer. Just call them inflatable pools are exempt. Yeah, although then I'll bring up some things I pro um my pool is not inflatable. Okay, so um a lot of some people, I don't know if anyone here in Ohio in our area, um they're using um cow ponds. Um god, I what's the other term? Uh cattle yeah. tanks mm -hmm. as pools. Do you know the ones I'm talking about? Um when I lived in Texas, um we used to go swimming in the cow tank. Um, the feed container? Um, it's 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 actually it's a it's a basically a water trough. Yeah. But they're big. They can be like um, 18 inches or two feet, and maybe up to like 10 feet. They're just like big round metal. I call them cow ponds. I don't know what the term is up here. Um. That that it's basically for livestock. Right. Yeah, you can get them in metal. I think now they yep. do them in plastic, but when I was young, they had them in metal. Um, and you know, granted, you know, when we swam in it, it was you know agricultural, <laughs> so zoning really didn't apply. <laughs> but um, I think there's um, um, it's getting popular to use those for like kitty wading pools or dog pools or whatever. But if it was like inflatable and or disposable, I don't know. Is that too complicated? Or? Yeah, because technically some of those kiddie pools, they're actually plastic liners. They're not inflatable. There's two types. I think inflatable works for the larger pools that we're talking about. Yeah. We don't care about the kiddie pools. <laughs> I was going to say, so... But it we do in, in the current text, so. Yeah, so. Jeff, what is your pool made of, if it's not uh, a? It's, it's got a liner. Uh, it's got posts that you attach okay. together. It's like, pretty much like PVC pipe got posts. It. And it's then you have, a, have a liner. It is. It, I mean, I'll, I'll take it down when it gets colder. Well, could you say inflatable and or collapsible pools? See, and I think that's why they have it as the definition of a structure because our structure is it has to be have a permanent base or be affixed to a permanent yeah. structure. Yeah, so yours so. basically has like a plastic frame with a liner that holds the, and that's how the water is contained as opposed yep. to inflatable air. Yep. And, that, and these can get pretty big, but. I'm thinking of structure. Am I on mute? No. I'm thinking of structures like if you have a, a wood patio decking or stairs going up to it or something like mm -hmm. that, where you're not going to move it, you know, season to season. It's a permanent fixture. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I would think any above ground, the large above ground pools are going to become structures because they're not going to move. And we have required fencing for that. So. Well, some of them, if they're, because especially if there's like a concrete, you know, if they're putting like foundation or any cut concrete slab underneath it. Yeah, well, the big ones would, I believe, need at least. Um, well, and, and then also, again, even if we didn't approve a fence in the past, I, I can't speak to past practices um, before Jeff and I's time, but 
the county would require that safety covering. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm at the point now. I'm almost wanting to uh, defer to the zoning staff because y'all are perhaps more familiar about what people are asking about and what's out there than um, at least than I am. Yeah, I just think it's it's just difficult to enforce something that's not permanent mm -hmm. as far as what we consider a structure as. So you have to, to, does your pool have a filter? It does have a filter. Yeah. I would think anything you'd use all summer would have to. So I think that, man. I'd leave it for now as inflatable and or collapsible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough call because, you know, the safety is obviously the biggest concern. Uh -huh. Michelle, can I sh share my screen real quick? Yeah, um, yes. I just, this is pretty much the type of pool I have is pretty much here, but it's smaller than this. Okay. So that's what it looks like. It's got some PVC pipes around it. How do you get in it? I step over it. It's 30 inches. But it could, a kid couldn't. No. I, I lift my kids up over into it, but it's 30 inches, but it holds a maximum of 24 inches of water. We don't have that much in it, but. But yeah, these but are different ones because these are like the inflatable ones, but then you have these that are not inflatable, but they are collapsible, but they will not be considered a structure from our definition. Yeah, and I think my kids actually have, I used to have one of those uh, rectangular NX ones. Yeah, and now yeah. I think theirs is like the summer waves, but it's not that big. It's not as big as the one you have on the screen because... Uh, I checked our zoning regulation for 18 inches. Not sure exactly how high it is, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hopefully the homeowner's smart enough to remove a ladder mm -hmm. so they can't access it. Kid's not gonna climb up that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be honest, that's also why I got a cover for mine. One was for safety reasons, and the other was just because um, we got tired of dumping the water. We're trying to be more environmentally friendly. Yeah. But you're right, some of them can get really big. I'm looking at these things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm good with the way that I think we have it worded as collapsible. Um, and, and or inflatable. Or, and or inflatable. Okay. Jeff, can I have my screen back? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate the board even considering this this evening. It, um, I think um, it, it's amazing how many residents use our our township pool, and that really put a, a hindrance on the community. And you know, their kids look forward to that every summer. And trying to figure something out now is this is one of the better options we can work with. Good. So again, this is what I changed um, since it is, a, it is, I wanted to include it as a stipulation because it is different from what the trustees originally initiated, so. Okay. So any other comments? So basically we removed the section asking them to limit the size, the trustees. Is that, is 
that correct? I don't have a problem with the either way. Um, I think okay. the inflatable and collapsible is yep. language me. That is correct. Okay. Are we okay? Yep. Okay. So can I have a motion? Are you able to see the, oh, Mark, did we lose you again? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to call it. I have a motion to propose the following amendments to the Orange Township Board of Trustees. As reflected in resolution 20-218. It wants to read it. <laughs> Mr. Pahovich moved adoption of the following motion, whereas pursuant of uh, to RC section 519.12, the Board of Township Trustees of Orange Township, Delaware County, Ohio, on May 18th, 2020, adopted its resolution number 20-218 to initiate amendments to modify or supplement section 12.06 M section 13.06 M, section 14.07 P, and section 21.05 C of the Orange Township Zoning Resolution. Whereas the Orange Township Zoning Commission has conducted public hearings regarding the resolution on June 2nd, 2020 and June 30th, 2020. And whereas the Delaware County Regional Planning Commission has uh, planning commission has presented its recommendation regarding such amendments adoption at its meeting on june 25th 2020 which recommendation has been considered during the public hearing now therefore mr pahovich moves that the modif uh, modification or supplements of the deletion uh, stated reflected in resolution 20-218 are recommended for approval to the board of township trustees with the following exceptions. Uh, modify section 21.05C of the last sentence to state the following, inflatable and or collapsible pools that do not meet the definition of a structure as defined in this resolution are exempt from this requirement. Further move that as indicated in attachment one of this motion, the existing text of the above stated exhibits is in black print New text proposed in this motion is in blueprint and other indicated changes being as reflected in zoning 20-218. Further move that a copy of this motion together with the re recommendation of the Delaware County Regional Planning Commission be submitted by the planning and zoning director to the board of township trustees as soon as possible so that it may proceed with its action in the matter according to law. Oops. Second. That's Todd. Yeah. Okay. Um, motion made by Mr. Pahovich uh, uh, to, uh, yeah, how do I say this? <laughs> to, uh, for the Orange Township Zoning Commission to the Board of Trustees regarding proposed amendments to the Orange Township Zoning Re Resolution as reflected in resolution number 20 218 of the board. Uh, that was seconded by Mr. Dove. Uh, those voting, Mr. Duell? Yes. Mr. Pahovich? Yes. Mr. Dove? Yes. Ms. Trebellis? Yes. And Mr. McNulty? Yes. Most carries. Great. Well, that is all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. I, I guess just move to adjourn and everyone have a good evening. Great. Thanks. You as well. Thank you. All right. Bye. Until next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>